the 24 hours, if you like, of important speeches. We've had them now, and yet still a bit of a, a flat sort of a finish, a meandering sort of a finish to the session. I guess no real surprises for market. We have seen a very busy 24 hours where we have spe seen speeches by Trichet, Trichet, Bernanke, as well as by Obama. And altogether, I guess no huge surprises. The big one was Obama's job speech. And in terms of that, a lot of it had been leaked to the market already. But in terms of size, it was bigger than expectations. The market was centering around a $300 billion package. But instead, we saw a $447 billion US dollar package. In terms of the effect, I guess it's going to be a while before we know whether this it will go through Congress in this form. It will be debated in Congress in November and possibly passed in December. So there is still a quite a long time frame. Although the US futures have been ticking up all day today, Asian markets haven't been able to follow suit. We've seen losses in Japan, in China. South Korea is an interesting one because there is a short selling ban in place there. And we saw South Korea, the worst performing market around the region. Compared to the performances in Korea, in China, as well as in Japan, the Australian market doing relatively well with a gain of 0.2 percent. Some of that would have been short covering ahead of the weekend. We see that G7 meeting which is going to be very firmly in focus given that we have seen second quarter contraction in Canada as well as Japan and we have seen uh, some of the growth moderating in countries uh, like France and uh, France as well as Germany. So having a look at uh, that G7 meeting and I guess there's an expectation that perhaps we could see some sort of coordinated move uh, by the G7. Julia, what about for the week? I mean, what have you made of the trading for the, for the entire, entire week, the week in its entirety? Well, once again, we have seen quite a volatile week, but if we have a look at the week for the ASX 200, down by 1.1%. In fact, the only sectors to gain were those defensive areas. So we saw consumer staples and telecom the gainers, but the worst performing sector was the energy sector. We have seen oil prices under a fair bit of pressure on concerns about global growth. And overnight, we did see the OECD come out with their growth forecast, and they are predicting that uh, growth has already pretty much stagnated in a lot of the major countries. Or, and will have um, pretty much all but disappeared in areas uh, like France by the second the fourth quarter. So those are growth forecasts very closely watched overnight. In terms of individual stocks, we saw some big movers as well. And I guess a lot of Australian stocks are trading ex-dividend mm. uh, in this period. So if we have a look at Seven West Media, it went ex-dividend. That stock down by 15%. We saw Blue Scope losing more than 10%. Now it looks like that stock's going to be kicked out of the ASX 50, uh, top 50 index in the September rebalancing by Standard and Poor's. One still going ex-dividend, that stock losing around about 10%. So some very big moves in terms of the market, but unfortunately we are finishing in the red, down by 1.1%. The worst performer there, the energy sector. Michael and, and John have said, you know, that this desire to have some sort of leadership and some of the criticisms of the president had been he was being seen too much as a, a negotiator and that he needed to step up to the plate and be more presidential. I guess the market's really running on hope on the days that we have seen upward movements and I think there is a lot of hope around this jobs package but the fact is we have seen payroll tax cut before and that hasn't really ended up in a stimu stimulation of jobs, a creation of jobs. In fact if we have a look at small size businesses I guess the big question is do they need more workers or are they going to take on workers that they don't need so it's a question of demand. Hopefully some of these payroll cuts, the, um, the $4,000 payments for hiring someone who's been been out of work for more than six months will help create jobs but I guess underlying this is whether or not the demand is there for these workers mm. and unless there's demand there for the workers I mean I can't really see businesses putting on workers that they don't need also the question of unintended consequences if there is a four thousand dollar credit uh, for hiring people that have been out of work for six months do we start to see some loss of jobs so that businesses can pick up that four thousand uh, dollar tax credit so it's going to be interesting to work out the details of this also how it's going to be funded 447 billion dollars we're yet to see the details of how it's going to be funded so I think maybe a step in the right direction the market hopeful but we have seen payroll cuts before not to this extent um, hope for more jobs and I guess job creation has been the big uh, thing that has been missing in terms of the US market as well as some sort of uptick in the housing market so the market quite hopeful and yet at the same time we have seen attempts at stimulating this job market before and it hasn't worked. You in the market day. Extract Resources receiving a speeding fine. 
Extract Resources yesterday had a fantastic performance up by 6.3%. Not only that, we saw a volume surge. So the volumes yesterday were three times the previous days. And it does look like there is a bit of speculation around takeovers and mergers. We have a look at Extract Resources. It is a uranium uh, miner and it is hoping to produce by 2015. Now there has been a lot of rumblings in terms of takeover talk for Extract before. And of course, uh, Kalahari, uh, it, supposedly in talks with uh, its Chinese shareholder for a possible takeover of extract and that's really what sparked the rumors. We've seen this before, it fell apart last time after uh, the Japan nuclear disaster but certainly a lot of these uranium assets are looking quite attractive at these levels so Paladin extract possibly uh, uh, possible takeover targets and if we have a look at extract share register of course Kalahari owns 43 percent so a massive amount there and Rio Tinto also on the books because extracts uh, uranium mine is pretty much right next door to Rio Tinto's Rossing mine in Namibia so Rio Tinto holding a 20 percent stake there and we also have a J Japanese company Itochu holding a 16 percent stake so extract resources it looks like it's going to be firmly in focus over the next few weeks and probably